Hello and welcome to Jungling Tips with Commando Yi. This is the first video of the introductory jungling video series for Season 5, and today we'll be focusing on the jungle camps. Here are a few important points about the jungle camps that you may not be aware of. Every single camp, including the red buff and the blue buff, give approximately the same amount of experience. This means no matter which camp you start at first, you will always hit level 2. And no matter what two camps you do after that, you will always hit level 3. The four main jungle camps provide approximately the same amount of gold. And so this means when it comes to gold and experience, all four camps are equal in value. The raptors, the krugs, and the gromp deal the most damage and will kill you fairly quickly. The wolves, however, take much longer to kill you due to their low offensive stats. This means if you just need some gold and experience and are low on HP, the wolves are your best bet as they are the least likely to kill you. The jungle camps provide special bonuses the moment they are smited. The Krugs provide a buff called the Gift of the Heavy Hands. As of patch 4.21, every sixth auto attack will stun the jungle monster you are attacking. Since this is essentially a form of damage mitigation by preventing monsters from attacking you, the net effect is that it lets you stay at higher HP levels while jungling. As this buff is tied to auto attacks, it means that it provides the best results on champions who have one of three abilities. Attack speed buffs. Examples include Trundle's Frozen Domain and Warwick's Hunter's Call. Double strikes. Examples include Shivana's Twin Bites and Master Yi's Double Strike. Auto attack resets. Examples include Jax's Empower and Trundle's Chomp. Champions who have these kinds of abilities will make the most of this buff to significantly reduce the amount of damage they take in the jungle. The Red Brambleback restores 20% of your maximum health as soon as it is smited. It doesn't actually matter when you smite it. Whether you smite it early or late, it will restore the same amount of health. Of course, if you're worried about the possibility that the buff might get stolen, you will smite it when it's low to secure the buff. Now right away you might have noticed that both the Krugs and the Red Buff offer damage mitigation by keeping you at higher HP levels if you smite them. So when you are starting on the bottom side jungle, the question you would ask yourself is should I smite the Krugs or the Red Buff? The answer depends on the kind of jungler you are. If you have no double strikes, no auto attack resets, and no attack speed buffs, there is literally no advantage to smiting the Krugs. In this example here with Hecarim, I'm doing two different paths trying to hit level 3 as quickly as possible. On the left side, I'm going from Krugs to Red Buff to Raptors. I smited the Krugs, but I'm unable to take full advantage of the buffs that I got. I end up taking too much damage anyway and die along the way. The path I take on the right smiting the Red Buff is much more forgiving, leaving me at higher HP levels and taking less damage since I'm finishing at the Wolf Camp. The important point here is that if you do not have abilities that work well with the buff from the Krugs, there is really no reason to smite them. Now here is an example with the full clear by Trundle, who has both auto attack resets as well as attack speed buffs. He's able to use the smite bonus from the Krugs to their full potential and mitigate a lot of damage in the jungle, and he's actually able to do a full clear. One thing to keep in mind is that the smite bonus from the Krugs is strictly a jungle only bonus. It provides no benefits outside the jungle, and during the later stages of the game, it's always better to smite the red buff over the Krugs since it will restore 20% of your total health, which may help during skirmishes and teamfights. The Raptors give a smite bonus called the Razor Sharp. It will throw up an exclamation mark the moment you are seen by a ward, and give you a short time interval to find and clear the ward. For you as a jungler, this is the most strategically valuable buff from any of the jungle camps. It allows you to manually sweep an area without relying on pink wards or sweeper trinkets which can only cover a short radius. The main advantage comes from knowing whether or not you've been seen during your ganks. If you've been spotted by an enemy ward, you can clear it. If you haven't been seen, you know that you have the element of surprise on your side and this makes your ganks much more powerful. In this example here, I make a sloppy yet successful gank on the enemy victor as Trindamir and we secure the kill. Since my Razor Sharp hasn't triggered yet, I decide to pay the bottom lane a visit, and along the way I notice that the bottom lane is not warded at the moment, so I'm able to pull off another gank in the bottom lane since the enemy team never saw me coming. 
The raptors are generally the camp that you want to smite to maximize your odds of success on a gank. Smiting the wolves will summon a spirit that will keep an eye over the nearby area. The moment an enemy champion comes nearby, it will chase after them. The value of this buff is that it gives you vision on counter junglers in the early parts of the game, and during the later stages of the game, it can give critical vision on enemy champions passing through your jungle. So if you are facing a jungler who is always in your jungle, or has bought the Poacher Smite upgrade, it's worthwhile to smite the wolves so that you can keep an eye on your own jungle and capitalize on the enemy counter jungler's position by collapsing on them within your jungle. Or if you're not nearby, you can go for objectives on the map, gank lanes, or go into the enemy jungler's jungle and do a bit of counter jungling of your own. The blue sentinel returns 25% of your maximum mana. This is probably the least useful smite buff since the smite bonus gives you stats you'd get over time anyway for free since the blue buff does in fact help you regenerate mana. For this reason, it's only useful on junglers who are mana starved in the jungle and do not worry about jungle sustain. The Grum provides a buff called the Gift of the Toadstool. This buff deals poison damage to anyone who attacks you including jungle monsters, minions, and champions. This also means that it is the only smite buff that will speed up your jungle clear as it's the only one that deals damage. Note that it's best to smite it early to make use of the buff on the Gromp itself. Since it deals damage over time, it's more effective on tanks who take longer to clear the jungle than it does on champions who clear the jungle fairly quickly. But in all cases, it always leads to you dealing more damage along your jungle routes and faster clears. As mentioned earlier, this buff also deals damage to champions. As an example here with Ramus, I smite the Gromp and go near the enemy Draven, Callista, and Graves. Ramus is naturally tanky and it takes quite a while to kill him, which allows him to make the most of the buff compared to squishy junglers like Master Yi. Basically this means if you are a tank jungler and you want to deal the most amount of damage you can in teamfights, always smite the Gromp before the next teamfight. People on the enemy team will always attack you since you are the frontliner and this buff will allow you to deal tons of damage. Now you might think that this buff barely did anything here and is quite weak, and it is true that it is weak in the early stages of the game. But during the later stages of the game, it gets incredibly strong dealing 148 damage over 3 seconds to anyone who attacks you. This basically makes it a ranged sunfire cape of sorts since you don't have to be near the enemy champions and you still deal damage to them so long as you are in the front line and they're auto attacking. In this example here with Sajuani in the late game, the gift of the Toastal passive is strong enough to eat through most of the 3700 hit points on the Gromp. As a tank jungler, you'll want to smite the Gromp before you go into mid to late game teamfights so that you can deal tons of damage. In summary, all of the jungle camps provide the same amount of experience, and the four main jungle camps provide approximately the same amount of gold. However, the wolves are the safest of these four jungle camps as they deal the least damage. Both the Krugs and the Red buff provide different ways to mitigate damage in the jungle. The Raptor buff allows you to sweep for wards and make confident ganks knowing that you haven't been spotted. The Wolves help with spotting opponents and work best against counter junglers. And the Grob makes for faster jungle clears and also provides tanks another source of damage in teamfights. And that wraps it up for this guide on the jungle camps. Now I would like to receive any feedback on the quality and the content of these videos so feel free to leave any suggestions or ideas in the comment section below.